You're standing in the candy aisle. Chocolate bars everywhere. You reach for one, check the label, toss it in your cart. Chocolate. But here's something that might surprise you. That bar? There's a good chance it's not chocolate. Not real chocolate, anyway. It contains no cacao butter, replaced with vegetable oils, artificial flavoring, and legally sold as chocolate. And the reason? Real chocolate requires a process so specific, so time-consuming, that manufacturers would rather fake it. So what makes real chocolate actually chocolate? How do cacao beans become that smooth bar? And why can something called chocolate contain zero actual chocolate? Let's explore the process. Here's the thing about chocolate. Cacao beans taste nothing like chocolate. They're bitter, astringent, inedible raw. The flavor has to be created through fermentation, roasting, and conching. It starts with the cacao tree, the obroma, cacao, food of the gods. It grows only near the equator, hot, humid forests, nowhere else. The tree produces football-shaped pods growing from the trunk. Each pod contains 20 to 40 beans surrounded by white pulp. Farmers harvest by hand, crack them open, and scoop out the beans. Now here's where it gets interesting. Those beans are placed in wooden boxes and left to ferment for five to seven days. Wild yeasts and bacteria start working. Temperature hits 50 degrees Celsius. The beans change from purple to brown. This fermentation is critical. It develops chocolate flavor precursors. Without it, you don't get chocolate taste. You get bitter beans that taste like vinegar. After fermentation comes drying. Beans spread on mats in the sun for one to two weeks until they reach 7% moisture. Once dried, the beans get shipped to chocolate makers. First comes roasting at 120 to 140 degrees Celsius for 30 to 40 minutes. The heat develops chocolate flavor through the Maillard reaction, the same process that browns bread. Roasting makes shells brittle. The beans go through a winnowing machine that separates shells from nibs, the edible part. Nibs are ground into chocolate liquor, not liquor like alcohol. It's pure ground cacao, 55% cacao butter and 45% solids. At this point, it's bitter and gritty, not smooth. This is where production splits, real chocolate and imitation. For real chocolate, the next step is conching. Conching is where chocolate liquor is heated and stirred for hours or days. It grinds particles down to 20 microns, so fine your tongue can't detect them. That's where smoothness comes from. But conching does more. It aerates the chocolate, evaporating acids. It coats every particle with fat. It develops complex flavors. High-quality dark chocolate is conched for 24 to 72 hours. Some luxury brands conch for a week. Days of continuous stirring. It's expensive. It takes time. After conching comes tempering. Chocolate has six crystal structures. Only one, Form 5, is stable, shiny, and snaps when you break it. Get it wrong and chocolate blooms. White streaks appear. The process takes weeks and it requires cacao butter. That's the key. Real chocolate must contain cacao butter. Now here's the kicker. Pick up a bar labeled chocolate. Read the ingredients. If it says vegetable oil or palm kernel oil instead of cacao butter, it's not real chocolate. Manufacturers replace cacao butter with cheaper oils. Cacao butter costs $8 to $12 per kilogram. Palm oil costs less than $2. Why is cacao butter expensive? It only comes from cacao beans. Trees take three to five years to start producing. Each tree produces only 20 to 30 pods yearly. You need 400 beans for one pound of chocolate. So manufacturers skip it. 
They use vegetable oils, add cocoa powder for color, mix in artificial flavoring, and call it chocolate. But wait, it gets worse. Some use alkalized cocoa, treated with alkaline to darken color. This destroys most antioxidants that make real chocolate beneficial. Others use chocolate liquor stripped of cacao butter, mixed back with vegetable oils. Technically, it contains chocolate ingredients, but it's been processed beyond recognition. In the U.S., the FDA requires real chocolate to contain cacao butter. But products get around this by calling themselves chocolate-flavored or chocolatey. That's why you see made with real chocolate or chocolatey coating. Legal loopholes. Some chocolate, but mostly vegetable oil and sugar. Real chocolate costs $3 to $5 per 100 grams. Imitation costs $1 or less. When consumers can't tell the difference, why bother? But here's the thing, you can tell. Real chocolate melts at body temperature, 34 to 38 degrees. Put it in your mouth and it melts smoothly. Imitation doesn't melt the same way. Vegetable oils have different melting points. It feels waxy or greasy. Real chocolate snaps when you break it. That crisp sound means proper tempering. Imitation bends or crumbles. Real chocolate has depth. You taste complexity, fruity notes, nutty flavors, subtle bitterness. Imitation tastes one-dimensional, just sweet with vague cocoa flavor. And real chocolate lists cacao butter in ingredients. If you see vegetable oil or hydrogenated oil, it's imitation. Look for percentages. 70% cacao means 70% is cacao beans, butter, and solids. Higher percentages mean less sugar, more real chocolate. So let's go back to that candy aisle, that bar in your hand. But now you know real chocolate requires fermented beans roasted at precise temperatures, ground into liquor, conched for days, and tempered to form crystals. You know it must contain cacao butter, the fat that melts at body temperature. You know cheap bars replace cacao butter with vegetable oils. You know they skip conching, use alkalized cocoa, rely on artificial flavoring. You know they can call themselves chocolatey without being chocolate. The next time you buy chocolate, you'll check for cacao butter. You'll look for percentage labels. You'll test the snap and feel the melt. You'll know whether you're eating the result of a weeks-long process or just sugar and oil with cocoa flavor. That's the process. We reveal how things actually work, one story at a time. If there's something you'd like us to explore next, let us know. Until then, trust the process.